Hey, what is up guys? Eli from Mobox Graphics again. In this quick video I would like to go over some techniques to create some fog or mist in Cinema 4D. I've been looking at some videos on YouTube and I noticed most people use the environment or they use a light with some visibility on it and some noise shaders. And of course these work, but I find them to lack a little in detail and control. For example, the environment only gives us a very smooth kind of fog, so it has no texture to it or something. And the light fog is more detailed, but it is also limited to the area of the light itself, so it isn't infinite. Something I haven't come across, but what I like to use, is the physical sky. It kind of surprises me I haven't seen anyone using this. But also at first sight you could go in the time and location, the sky tab, the sun tab, the details. And there is nothing to be found about the fog. And it has taken me quite some time to find it myself. Even though it's very obvious. Because it is just hidden under the basic tab. And down here you have multiple options. And one of them is the fog. So click the fog. And now we have this new tab. And there is everything you need to control how it looks. So let's go over some of these while looking at this scene. So um, I will be setting my time to something like in the afternoon or something. Great, so let's take a look. Um, first of all, you can change the color, but first I will just render the scene so you know what's going on. The only thing you can notice right now is there is some kind of gradient at the horizon. That's all there is to it right now. So it's very bright white right now. I would like to go to something more gray for now. Um, maybe it's also a good idea to use the interactive render region. So you don't have to press render every time. Because we will make a lot of changes. So it's easier if you can instantly see what is going on. Okay, so the color is a little more gray right now. A second thing we need to do is actually going down a lot. And right here you can set the kind of noise, so the texture of the fog, to something like wavy turbulence. Um, if you press this little arrow, there are multiple kind of noises you can choose from. I like to use the more kind of bright materials. The noise will be translated by the color of it. Everything that is black will be hidden or no fog and everything that is white will be representing the fog. So let's stick with wavy turbulence. And to make this activated, we need to set the strength to something stronger. For example, 100%. Okay, so um, right now it isn't doing very much yet. You can maybe see something in the distance. But first we can set the start height and the end height to something like this. You want to start below the floor in a negative value. Just a very little, so it doesn't start floating above the floor and the end height can be quite large there isn't a very specific number to it you have to see it yourself it all depends on the scene and I've noticed it isn't very accurate in numbers anyway sometimes it ends up being the double number of what the actual height is in the scene so it's just trial and error the next thing to get it more visible is actually setting the density to a higher number so 20% isn't enough you often have to go in something like even 200 or 300 percent to make it visible. That changed the whole scene right now. You can notice it has these kind of horizontal lines to it. And we don't like these, it doesn't look very realistic in my opinion. But that is because of the scaling on here. So you can see it is scaling it horizontally by 1500 percent, so that's a lot. Let's change these to something like 900 by 600 by 900. And that gives us this more cloudy feel to it. Like maybe even a fog machine is shooting some fog in the scene. Now something I would like to do for this specific scene is going in the shadow intensity. And this makes the shadow kind of darker. So everything that is casting shadow from the sun is also casting shadow on the smoke. So it doesn't stay white or very grey if there is something blocking the sun from it. A last thing I would like to point out in this scene is um, this graph right here. Right now it has this kind of tent look to it, but this represents the density of the fog. Right now at the middle of our scene, so we're going up to 500 centimeters for example, 
At 250 it is the most thick and condensed, while at the bottom and the top it is more transparent. It depends on what kind of fog you're trying to create. In real life this is quite realistic, it often doesn't start at the floor, but for the more dramatic and more cinematic look, it is often a good idea to delete some of these points right here, just select them and hit delete. We only need three points and when you drag this top one all the way to the left, you get some kind of more cinematic look to it. So the floor is totally covered, you can barely see it and it is just fading away in the sky. To be more realistic it's actually the other way around, so let's try moving it to the right. This way it is more like the floor is still clear, which is kind of realistic. When you're walking in the fields and it's kind of foggy, you often see the floor but you can't see anything in front of you. So that's what's happening with this kind of curve to it. Okay, so to explain some more of this, let's open a second scene. And I will be using some kind of city that comes with Cinema 4D, so I can go in the content browser and type in city. And here is one. And right now it's a little large and the fog doesn't work very well with large scenes. I recommend scaling everything down a little. So otherwise you have to go in very high values and it gets confusing and stuff. So that is why I'm scaling it down. I'm also going to add a floor to it. Okay, something like this maybe. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is um, copying this physical sky for now, just to be quick. What I would like to explain with this scene is that if you're looking at it from a distance, something like this is happening. And it isn't really that exciting or pleasing to look at. What I would like to do is going closer to it. And let's see what this gives. Like some kind of street view. And you can already tell it isn't really giving us any fog at all. Only at the sky a little. And that is happening because of multiple reasons. First of all, we can try to decrease the start height so we're sure it's starting low enough. I'm also going to move this graph back to this. Let's see again. I'm going to set the interactive render region for now. You can also move this tiny triangle downwards so it isn't rendering at full capacity. Okay, we can see a little fog now. A second thing you can do to enhance the look of the fog is actually making sure the sky is rotated so the sun is right in front of you so you have some kind of contrast to it. Maybe even set the time to something more realistic like the morning or the evening. Okay so we are getting some fog now and some nice shadows and stuff. But you can see it isn't really dense enough. Let's go to the fog again and maybe increase the density to something like 300%. It's just trial and error. Okay, we are getting fog now, but you can only see it in the distance really, and right here it is not very visible. That's realistic of course, it's always stacking up, so in the distance it is more condensed, and right in front of you it isn't really visible. But sometimes you just want to have fog right here. And the trick I used for this is using a new camera, I'm looking into it. And right here under the object tab you can set the focal length to something like zooming in. But this will always manipulate the perspective of your scene, so it kind of removes the perspective actually. But that is not what I would like to do. What I would like to do instead is moving the camera back. Um, let's zoom out. And we can move it back as the object itself. And looking through it again, of course it isn't the same anymore, but you're getting a lot of fog now. To compensate this without zooming, you can set the sensor size to something different. So making it smaller is actually zooming in also without crushing the perspective like the zoom or focal length actually does. By doing this you're actually stacking up all the fog in between the camera and the point where we are viewing at. That way it will become more visible for us. The last thing I would like to point out in this scene is how you can set up some custom lighting. You're not tied to the physical sky itself. I can understand you don't want the sky and the sun and you want to use your own light without the physical sky interfering with that. So it is very simple. Just under the basic tab you can go down here and deselect the sky and the sun and that will get rid of it all. Let's just quickly use an omni light with some shadow to it and maybe move it up a little. And this way you can see how you can use your own lights to get some nice scenes with the fog of the physical sky. 
Okay, uh, last scene I would like to make is just a regular floor with some cubes to it. They can be quite large and it will just represent some city so you don't need to do exactly what I'm doing of course. Just some random buildings across the scene. Okay, I guess this will do for now. Let's get the physical sky again. Enable the fog. And we are going to set the time to something in the morning, like 8.30. And let's see, we are already going to set up a camera. And it always looks nice if you set the camera at a very low angle, so we get a lot of fog in between the camera and the objects we are looking at. Let's also rotate the sky, so the sun is right behind the buildings. It gives us a nice contrast. Okay, let's set up the fog for now. We are going to start a lot below the scene. And we will end up very high because the buildings are like maybe a thousand centimeters tall or something. Let's set the density to something like a hundred will do for now. We are going to set the wavy turbulence again. You can experiment with any other ones, but I find the wavy turbulence always looks the best for me. Let's set the strength to 200. This is very strong, but it will give a nice contrasty look to it. We don't want this fog to look stretched, so let's change the scaling. 900, 300 and 900. And let's get the interactive render region again, so you can see what actually is going on. It's starting to look quite nice. But to make it look really good, we can change the shadow intensity to 100, so we get a lot of contrast in the shadows. And this makes it look very dramatic. And the last thing we can do is changing the illumination intensity to something like 20 maybe. And what this does is that the fog is actually absorbing the light from the sun. So it isn't just plain white but a little orange. So let's move the scene a little maybe, the camera. And let's take a look how this looks. Right here you can see how dramatic the shadows are actually being casted on the fog. But you don't see it as much if you move the camera very low. It also looks nicer again if you move the camera away a little, so there is more in between it. And there we go, that is the effect I was looking for. So if you're happy about this, you can just hit the render button and go for the full render. And let's take a look at that. And I think that looks quite amazing. So this was just a quick video with the tips on how to create some nice looking fog in your scenes. I hope you can use this in your own projects and improve the look of your scenes. If this video helped you in any way, leaving a like really means a lot to us. And I hope to see you in the next video.